Hi, I'm Kate Krieger Watkins here with The Scoop for Mason County Press, and this edition of The Scoop is brought to you by Safe Harbor Credit Union in Ludington. And today I'm joined with Mitch Foster, the new city manager of Ludington. Well, thanks for having me. And thanks for yeah. deciding you do it. So <laughs> why don't you give us a little history of uh, how long you've been at the, yeah. the city manager and where you were before and some stuff that you're working on right now. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, I started here in the city of Ludington in mid-March. Uh, it's been three, three and a half months now, I think, at this point. Uh, it has been interesting. It has been fun. Uh, I Previous to this, I spent four years in Wisconsin. My wife is from there. Uh, I Previous to that, I was two years in Kingsley, just outside Traverse City. And during that time, my wife was traveling 45 minutes each way to uh, the hospital on the west side of Traverse City from Fife Lake. And she said, enough Jeez. of that. Yeah. And so after two years in Kingsley out of grad school, I uh, made my way over to Winnick County, Wisconsin. It is a suburb of Oshkosh, a community of about 25, uh, 2,600 people, um, but then would balloon every summer to double and triple that size, very similar hmm, to Ludington. I was going to say, sounds, yeah. sounds familiar. Also similar to Ludington in that it has a ton of water. It was on the Wolf River, which is a tributary to uh, both uh, the Bay of Green Bay as well as Lake Michigan, and then would connect up with the Fox River, which is kind of the bigger known uh, river system over in Wisconsin. Uh, I guess even going farther back, did my grad work at the University of Nevada, Reno. I uh, decided after I spent four years at Northern Michigan University up in the UP that I wanted to get away from the climate a little bit. And uh, went out to Reno for two years, uh, got a master's degree in public administration, loved it, and uh, had a few internships there, interned at the city of Everett, where my father lives, and uh, kind of fell into this position now. Cool. Um, which has been fun. Good, good, good. So what is going on right now that you're, like some big projects that you're working on as city manager in Ludington that we can talk about? Uh, yes, you I just like got that. an email. Oh yeah, I keep getting emails. Uh, uh, you're going to hear that throughout the Yeah, I will do my around. best to hopefully That's ignore those. Uh, but no, there are quite a few things that I can and cannot talk about, obviously, because some stuff is, is cool, but it'll come out in time. Obviously, the big one right now is $23, $25 million at our wastewater treatment plant. Um, that project has been ongoing for multiple years in the planning process, trying to figure out where we were going to go next. Uh, upon rules from the Department of Environmental Quality and now the Environment, Great Lakes and Energy or whatever the new EGLE uh, term is for that department. Uh, but that is going to be a you know 18 months to two year long project. Okay. Um, we started it in the March-April time frame right as soon as I got here. Uh, finished up the financing just before that. But it is a big project. Uh, we are taking essentially three different ponds and putting it all into one single treatment place. Uh, and that will help kind of make it a more efficient process but also prevent thing issues long term. Uh, once that project is kind of a little bit farther underway, we've got to figure out what we're going to do with those remaining two ponds. Okay. We do know we're going to have to put some monitoring wells underneath uh, to make sure that there's no groundwater contamination. But beyond that, you know, are we going to be able to cap one uh, or are we going to have to cap both of them and figure out what to do? Those are not part of this big project financing right now. So again, where that money comes from and how we pay for that, we're going to be working with the state on that very in in intensely here moving forward. Uh, what else do we have going on? We've got the water plant just finished up. That was a nine to ten million dollar project uh, that took two years. They just finished that here last week and had our final walkthrough. We obviously have the Ludington and Loomis apartments that are going up right now. Uh, those are both. One is on schedule. One is behind schedule, just based on the vapor barrier issues that they had. Now, can you talk a little bit yeah. about that? Because I know a lot of people <laughs> have one. Because. <clears throat> A lot of people are like, we thought the one in the front on Langton Avenue was going to be the first one up, and then the senior living was, but it's kind of flipped. So yeah. kind of describe why. Yeah, it was it was simply that they were essentially moving at the same pace, and then a vapor barrier issue, which is kind of below the bottom layer. They have to put a, a coating or a base level that showcases and or separates the, the water and the hydro issues from okay. the actual structure itself. Got it. And so that, because they have to have a consistent temperature to install that in our weird spring, end of winter situation we had, it, it kind of postponed that process. So now the the Ludington Avenue building is moving on, moving on schedule now. It's trying to catch up. They've actually been working on weekends. Um, and with that whole project, the old fire station will be coming down probably beginning next week, Monday. I uh, saw the 
there was some stuff on the roof that already looked like it was starting to yeah. get like, pried away. Yep. So, and okay. uh, we took the siren down. The siren was pulled down last week. I've got pictures of that coming down. That'll go into storage. And then once that whole area is kind of all set, they've got the parking lot installed, we're going to have a new pole put in with the siren to put on top. So it will stay downtown. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. a lot of people, too, have asked me and said, oh, d is it not going to come back? Is it going to go to the new fire station? <laughs> so me living on North Rath, right, right. that makes me feel good that it's going to be downtown. Yeah, so. we're going to keep it downtown. Cool. I think it's something that people have gotten used to, and it's something that they look forward to having. It's like the Badger. Oh, yeah. It tells me when I go to bed. Uh, you know, they got the 10 o'clock. I... If my lights are not out by the time that started, you know, sirening, we'd have an issue and I'd be really tired the next day. So, no, that, that project is continuing right, to move cool. along. Hopefully that's, uh, that's on schedule and still by the fall we have a really a couple of nice buildings there. Okay. And can you, for people watching, can you just explain a little bit the difference between the two buildings? Uh, yeah. Because a lot of people get confused of affordable housing to low-income housing to senior housing and all that. Yeah, so the easiest way is, I think this was all predated me, but most both projects are, uh, are utilizing a type of financing through the IRS tax code called Section 42. Um, another term for it is LIHTC, which is Low Income Housing Tax Credits. Primarily, they are focused on what we would call workforce housing. You have to make between a certain amount. They aren't a Section 8 you know, uh, voucher system. You have to make um, enough to pay for it, but you can't make more than because it's trying to allow people that make within a certain bracket the ability to pay a little bit lower on a nicer facility for rent so that and then as they continue to make more money, they don't aren't necessarily kicked out immediately. They can stay on through their leases up. Okay. But then once they are making more money than what's allowed in those facilities, then they can go on and look for more market rate or buying a house. Okay. Um, they have to hold on to it in most circumstances. About It's about 15 years that they have to hold on to it. Um, this one has a little bit more of an interesting take because there's also um, transitional homeless housing within that facility as well, which will allow, and I think we all see it in our community, we've got a handful of residents that uh, make enough money, or don't, I should say, don't make enough money to afford to live in an apartment or buy a home. And so they have stable jobs, but they just don't have consistent housing. And so that's part of the goal of that building is okay. to provide for that, as well as uh, some services within the facility, um, social workers and that sort of thing, to help them kind of get on their feet and, oh, and find some full-time housing after great. that. So it's an interesting project. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I think it allows the city of Ludington to move itself forward in a way, and I'm not knocking Traverse City whatsoever, but you can't live in Traverse City for the most part, even if you make good money. You have to make a lot of money or yes. have to have a lot of money. And I think that's the advantage that the city has taken. And I know it can be controversial at times, but from my opinion, the more that the city focuses on providing workforce housing or allowing the developers to come in and build those sorts of housing facilities, the more you're able to keep housing prices consistent and you allow for a mix of incomes in your downtown mm -hmm. core that then allows for everybody, uh, you know, the, the, the old saying about, you know, high tide raises all ships, that I think will help us in the long term is it will keep housing prices at a good level because you still have housing available for those that can't necessarily afford, you know, your super high valued properties. Right. Well, and I think it's good too just because there's definitely a need for more rentals in yes. the area. So Yep, nope, I, I would agree wholeheartedly. I think it's kind of a win win situation. So mm -hmm. and then let's talk a little bit about something that you got to do this morning. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the uh the transportation and the the, the uh, downtown, well, I guess, Ludington Avenue. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> Ludington Avenue and what we were told, the city was told just within the last couple of weeks that Ludington Avenue, from the end of last year's project, which I got cl clarified, the, the last project was the resurfacing um, to about Harrison or Row, and they'll be doing the rest of that starting next year from Row all the way through to Lakeshore and then Lakeshore up to Tinkham with just a resurfacing, which essentially what they do is they take the top three to five inches of asphalt, grind it all up, and then put down a new layer, l level of asphalt. They're actually doing it on 31 right now by Pentwater. Uh, I, I told the city council, and it's my firm belief, that if we just keep doing these short-term fixes, it's about a seven to 10 year fix, maybe. If the base and the soils underneath are good enough, it'll last about seven to 10 years. To me, that's not a good use of money. If we want to fix a road, we should fix the road correctly and long term. And so this morning I had an interesting conversation with the Department of Transportation about this issue in particular, and, and they made it 
perfectly clear that the way that the DOT as well as the Federal Highway Administration looks at roadways is they essentially say, are you an interstate highway? You get first dibs. Okay. If you are a highway or a freeway in any sense, you get second dibs and you get kind of a preference if you connect interstate highways. Then they go to just general highways that connect things and then it's everybody else. They said the last time that a project like Ludington Avenues has been re reconstructed was more than 10 years ago. And when I asked them explicitly when they think they could ever get to doing Ludington Avenue or, uh, or Lakeshore, they said 20 years, 25 years, oh. for a full reconstruct. For me, that's not, that's not acceptable because we have to, no matter what, the citizens, the residents, the visitors are always gonna look to the city to say, hey, why are your roads bad? They aren't just going to assume it's the state that's doing it. And so we have to figure out an alternative way to make sure that the roads are in good quality condition. And not only that, but the utilities underneath both of those roads, according to my distribution gentleman or uh, my utilities guy, he said they're original, which terrified me. I thought he was talking wood at first. <laughs> That'd be scary enough. But they're, we're talking 40s, 50s, and 60s infrastructure underneath there. And you can't do that if it's just going to be a mill and fill or a crush and shape or a capital maintenance program, as they call it. And so I'd rather us, you know, wait a couple of years, do an actual reconstruction project that of those streets, do the utilities, make sure everything's done properly and according to a good plan, instead of just trying to put these Band-Aids on it over and over again, because that's just putting bad money after bad money. Well, and I think, too, with... Sergeant Sands and House of Flavors having big trucks coming in more frequently than they were 10 years ago. Right. That maybe it is this 7 to 10, you know, time frame. But those vehicles, and more and more people are driving larger vehicles, mm -hmm. too. That definitely puts a lot more wear and tear. I think we've noticed it, especially on Lakeshore Drive, just driving from the corner of Lennington Avenue to the beginning of Stearns Park. Mm -hmm. That road has taken a beating in the last... 10 years. Oh yeah, absolutely. You look in front of Wesco, there's like a, a five inch just hole or depression that's been made right in front of Wesco essentially. And my concern, and I told the DOT this, and they're actually going to be sending somebody up to look at it, is what if a motorcyclist is coming down over the hill from the lakeshore and doesn't see that? You know, my concern is they're going to hit that and wipe out and what causes, what injuries come from that. Right. You know, a, a vehicle, yeah, they, they might be able to handle that, but somebody who's on a motorcycle or a scooter, they're not going to be able to handle that as well. So I, there's some real issues that we've got to address with this, and I don't think a short-term fix like a mill and fill or a crush and shape is really going to fix those issues because it's my understanding, and this is lower, is that when they did some soil borings a few years ago, when they got down to about 15, 20 feet, it was sawdust below the roadway, just sawdust. That's normally not what we build roads on. <laughs> Usually, I mean, do, I do. Yeah, but right, right. Usually we do sand budget. or with you know, actual good fill, but sawdust, it's just going to continue to deteriorate and, and be gone. And so more of those potholes are going to pop up that we're, we're just not going to know how long it's going to be until it you know, really becomes really bad. Yeah, and I mean, weather for us, I mean, we get hit with hard winters mm -hmm. and the cold weather of the contrasting and, you know, contrasting and compressing of all that cement and everything is not, or asphalt I guess it is, is not really good for the road no, no, either. So I mean yeah. we're really, you know, kind of have the double-edged sword here. Right, absolutely. So, well, yeah. interesting. I'll yeah. be interested to see what happens with that. So. As am I. It'll be fun. So let's let's wrap up with one more thing that's going on. Let's talk about the West End Project. Yes. Uh, so, th and I can even go bigger picture than West End, but specifically it. West End, it's uh, it's a little bit behind because of all the water and the rain that we had. Mm -hmm. And obviously this weekend didn't help things at all uh, with that, that incredible storm that came through. The 30 second storm. Yeah, it was incredible to watch. Um, but w our hope is still that by the, before the 4th of July that it'll be completed. Um, I, you know, when I first got hired on here, the West End project was this big controversial project. The splash pad has always been this big controversial project. A couple of years ago, the city looked at doing a pilot on uh, narrowing up the street a little bit uh, as a pilot project for one year, see what happens. What I think they all kind of had the same thing, theme going on, which is that for a long time the city has, this, and I'm not just blaming the city of Lennington, but a lot of communities have always blamed or done things where we just make decisions and then we tell the public what's going to happen. And what I'm hoping to do, and I've already started working with my staff and the city council on this, is we've got to start involving them in decisions, talking to them about how things are going to be better or how they could be better, get their input and get their opinions so that we're building communities together instead of just a small group building the community and everybody sure. else having to live in it. 
So I think it's these little things like that, that you know, starting off and getting the communication out there early, early and often on projects. Loomis Street's gonna be reconstructed next year. So we're gonna start communicating with businesses and residents in the city to say, all right, here's the timeline, here are gonna be some alternate routes, here's where it's gonna affect you the most. But if we do that early and often, then we're being proactive instead of, oh hey, the West End project's starting, don't be mad at us when it's done. You know, <laughs> which is gonna happen no matter what. People are gonna right. be cr cranky and angry about different projects because it's changed and it's different, and I completely understand. But we can do stuff on the front end to make it a little bit easier and a little bit better and explain or talk about how these things could improve everyone's daily lives for everybody. Not just tourists, not just residents, not just the local government, but for everybody. So we'll see how it goes. It should be fun, though. Cool. Well, I appreciate you joining us today. Not a problem. And it sounds like we have a lot of stuff to look forward to <laughs> in the city, especially you. Enjoy that. Thanks. And uh, for all the other headlines, go on to masoncountypress.com. And a reminder that our daily weather forecast is brought to you by Smith and Eddie Insurance, which is also on the website. So, again, thanks for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to a, a busy summer here in downtown Lettington. As always. <laughs> yeah.